um, with a little Apalasana sequence. Can you all hear me okay? Good. So just coming to lay down. And just for a moment, notice if you can slide your shoulders down your back. Checking in with right and left side of the body, noticing if they're evenly placed on your mat. And just bring your awareness to breath in and out through the nose. And imagine as you breathe in that you draw the breath up through the soles of the feet, above the crown of the head as you inhale, and on the exhale all the way back down. So stay very present and alert here, not getting sleepy, keeping your breath nicely energised, drawing the gap through the soles of the feet, above the crown of the head, and back down again. And just staying with that awareness of real length and fullness to your breath. So we come to Sahasra Chakra today. Again, it doesn't matter if you've missed any of the previous weeks. Each practice is um, complete in its own right. But you will have noticed over the weeks that we've drawn postures up through grounding, through core, through heart opening, and, and up now to feeling that sense of length and lift above the crown of the head. And really it's where we bring it all together. So this idea that through um, our bodies, moving energy through the body we are more able to move energy well through the mind and to still the mind move anything that's not useful to us out and a lovely quote from um, BKS Iyengar it's through your body that you realize you're a spark of divinity so we touched a little bit on this last week and that can sound a little bit um, highbrow or airy fairy but really, again, just very simply, we shift our energy through the body. Our body and mind are inextricably entwined. And when we, when we move well, we can start to think well. Simple as that, really. And when we think well, we start to realise the, the, the bigger connections. And don't sweat the small stuff. So that can be your interpretation of divinity. <laughs> And in these happy yoga postures, um, we remove the, the, the literal crude physical blockages in the body. And heart and tha, as we've touched on before, is uh, cool and warm, or sun and moon, left and right. And then we bring it all back to the centre and start to cultivate that awareness, that stillness, that presence of mind for meditation, which is said to be the higher practices. I like to think more of yoga and meditation as a spiral, and sometimes the spiral untangles and goes up and down and loops around and round and round. And you're constantly revisiting and reminding and going around these cycles of change and struggle and ease and joy. And that's all fine. And we just keep doing it and we just keep going around and up and down and back and forth. And in the ancient texts, this idea that when we open the hips, we open the joints, we remove blockages in the body, we're able to sit with a self-supporting spine, with comfortable hips, with comfortable knees. So some days definitely don't feel like that. <laughs> but without our yoga practice, we'd probably feel worse. <laughs> so very much today, allowing your awareness to be on subtle sensation in the body, maybe quite intense sensation sometimes. And again, as we train our awareness of the body, we can start to train that awareness in the mind and our thinking. So we'll end up there, I hope. <laughs> so let's just take a deeper breath in and a full stretch, reaching arms and legs away. And then as you exhale, hop both your knees into your chest, Turning forehead to knees into a little ball. We'll take this little apanasana sequence, extending your left leg away and keeping the right leg hugged in, drawing shoulders down. And you can gradually ease that right knee a little more towards you. Maybe have just a little subtle shift of your pelvis side to side, just feeling the centre. 
reaching along the top through the top of your left thigh. Okay. And then just gently extend your leg towards straight. It can be quite bent. You can hold behind the thigh or the calf. And just flex and extend your foot. Really spread through your toes. And then roll the toes in and then open them up again. So the feet are out there. You want them to be awake, spacious, ready to hold above. <laughs> yes, and then we'll lower the right leg down, take a full stretch, breathing in. And as you breathe out, hug the left knee in. Again, just allowing the hip to gradually open out. Just noticing any tightness. Again, just keeping your breath long and fine. Reaching away with your right leg, so the top of the right hip feels long. And then as you breathe in next, bringing the left leg up to straight-ish, rolling through the foot, curling the toes back in, rolling them out again. You might get some nice cracks and pops there. Good. And then the next time you breathe in, we'll lower that leg all the way down, take a full stretch. Inhaling, and then just exhale, bring your arms down by your sides. Again, just checking in with your shoulders, draw them down into the mat. And bring the soles of the feet onto your mat hip distance in that bridge prep position. So we're going to take some rolling bridges here. So before you start, do you check that you feel the feet are evenly planted. And start to, again, spread the toes, really feel the pads of the feet press down. And we want to keep that nice ground as we move the spine through the waves up and down. So breathing in, again, draw the breath above the crown of the head. As you breathe out, start to draw up on the mula bandha, so the pelvic floor, a little bit of tone into the low belly. You'll feel the low back imprint. Now use your glutes and your legs to roll up through the spine. Breathe in again at the top, and breathe out to ripple each vertebrae back down into the mat. Lovely. Again, we'll bring the arms with us this time. So inhale, relaxing and expanding. Exhale, drawing up through the pelvic floor. Squeeze the glutes, lift the hips, lift the arms overhead. And then exhale, all the way back down, bringing the arms with you. Just noticing if the knees want to roll around. Try and feel aware of the inner line of the leg. Inhaling. Exhaling as much as squeezing the glutes, keeping the big toe side of the foot pressing down. Breathe in and breathe out, rolling it all the way back down. Good. Just do two more. Inhaling to prepare. Exhaling to roll it all the way up. Lovely. And really allowing your attention to be on each little shift of muscular engagement here. Each little roll through the vertebrae. No rush at all. And when you come down and you've done your last one, just give the knees a little hug into your chest. And then bring the soles of the feet back onto your mat. And just open into the hips a little bit with a figure four stretch or reclined pigeon. So again, start in your bridge prep shape. Breathe in, flex your right foot up to the ceiling and spiral the leg from the right hip, so turn it out as much as you can as you exhale. And then bringing the ankle over the left knee, and then rolling the knee away. So if you come to class and I tell you to do this against the wall, you've got time to do this against the wall now. You can go ahead and take that, Irene. <laughs> and then we'll start to squeeze the left knee in. Go behind the left thigh. And start to draw a little more depth into the hip opening. Keep flexing your right foot. Notice if it wants to sickle in. Spread the toes. You can really fan the toes if that helps you. Good. And then notice if you can lengthen the tail a little bit away as you squeeze the left leg in a little more. Notice if there's any tension in the shoulders. So if the hips feel tight, often the shoulders will want to hunch, the jaw will want to clench. And then just take a little rock to your left and then back to the centre. So you'll feel the right side of the pelvis lift off the mat. Just a small amount. Good. So 
Again, just really tuning in to the shift of sensation there. Go a little deeper if that feels good for you, or just keep the movement really small. Last one. And then back to centre. So unwinding everything. Taking a stretch, inhaling. Exhale, bring the palms down by the sides. Bring it back through that bridge prep. Grounding the shoulders. A little bit of drawing in of the low ribs, just again to keep the movement strong in the centre and to help you relax the shoulders and the neck. Inhale, extend the left leg up, flex the foot. Spiral out from the top of the thigh first. So it'll be quite a small movement there. And then bring the ankle across. And hopefully you can feel that active engagement of your hip rotators there. And then we'll hug in behind the right leg, giving it a little squeeze. Be in no rush to come into the depth. Great. You can relax the right leg in, it doesn't have to be held up. You can just let that leg hang, hinging at the knee there, yeah. And then a little rock to the right. And back to the centre. Great. And you can just do that another three times. Maybe making the movement bigger, maybe just keeping it nice and small. Easing out tension there. Lovely. And then we'll come back to the centre again. Inhale, full stretch, reaching arms and legs away. Point your toes, stretch yourself long. And then exhale, bring the hands down both sides. <coughs> Hug the knees into your chest. We're going to take happy baby, so you can either hold on behind your thighs or on the outside edges of your feet. So we haven't done much warming up, it might feel a bit tight. So again, just noticing. See if you can again draw the shoulders down the back, keep the neck and the jaw free of tension and start to notice the difference between pressing the tail down into the mat and drawing the legs in and then drawing the legs in more deeply and letting the tail lift off. So again, just moving with caution here. As we let the tail lift off, the hips will come into deeper uh, flexion or opening there, but it's gonna stretch out the lower back a little more. So just again, moving a little bit at a time, just finding those subtle shifts, easing out any tension in the lower back and the hips there. Great, really nice. And if you want to go side to side a little bit, you can as well. But the rolling back and forward of the pressing the tail down and then pulling the legs in is interesting. So Hugh, just try to send the soles of the feet a little more upright if you can and take the outer edges of your feet. Yeah, great. It might feel harder, sorry. <laughs> Breathing deeply there. Great. Good, and I mean you can take behind the knees and give the elbows a hook around the backs of the knees there. So then from here, again, we'll release gradually, taking a full stretch, reaching the arms overhead, and exhale, hug the knees in. And then we're going to take a little rock forwards and backwards. You can roll to one side if your back doesn't really like this for any reason. Come up to hover, and then just roll yourself all the way forwards to kneeling. So we're going to take some Chandra Namaskar, um, being as it was a full moon yesterday. So it's a slightly different... Uh, way of, of taking salutations. <laughs> um, so don't worry if, if you feel like you're looking a lot today, it, it will start to become more instinctive as we go through the rounds. So we start kneeling, hands on the thighs, palms down, and just take an opportunity again here to find a little bit of tone in the low belly, length from tail to crown. And just noticing if you can soften the shoulders away from the ears. And then as we inhale, we'll reach the arms up, parallel with the shoulders, palms face in. As you exhale, turn the palms forwards, reach into an extended child's pose, exhaling. Inhale, come to all fours, and a little arch like cat pose or cow pose. Exhale, tuck the toes and come through downward facing dog. So if you struggle to step from dog to lounge, uh, <laughs> dog to lounge, dog to lunge, this could be where you just come back to all fours and just have your blocks handy so that you can use those when you get there. And then we're going to lift the right leg. Again, just a hip height, flex the foot. Inhale, look forwards. Exhale, 
inhale, squeeze the knee to the nose and bring the foot between the hands. If you need your blocks, take the blocks on any facet and then gradually ease yourself down. Find the crescent moon here. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale there, draw the tail under. So we feel the tail in the low belly. And then inhale, sweep the arms up, reach long. Press the palms. Exhale, bring the hands straight back down. We'll step straight back to downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. Inhale, lift the left leg. Really flex through the left heel. Inhale again to look forwards. Exhale to round and squeeze the knee to the chest. And extend the left leg down. And reaching the right knee back. So just make sure the back knee is happy. Scissor the legs a lot. Inhale here, lengthen. Exhale, draw the tail under, squeeze the low belly in a little. And then inhale, reach it up. Press the palms, reach short. Exhale, bring the hands back down. Yes, this is where it gets a little bit different. We step back to downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Inhale to all fours. Exhale there. Sit back to kneeling, and then come back through to an Ustrasana shape. So you can keep the toes tucked, bring the hands to the low back, inhale, lift the chest, so just a little baby camel, more of a, a sense of lifting and opening the chest really, and exhale there. Come back through kneeling, extended child's pose, breathing in, breathing out. And then coming back to where we started, in kneeling. Okay, have a slight variation this time, so we'll inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, bring them all the way forwards. Into extended child's. Inhale to like a little cow pose, arching the spine. Exhale, squeeze back into spine and roll it into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up, look forwards. Exhale, knee to nose, curl in and plant the foot down, lowering onto the back knee. So just hold here for a sec. We're going to come into like a little monkey variation here, a quad stretch. If that really doesn't work for your knees from this lunge, all you're going to do is step back knees, chest, chin, and take a little quad stretch here. And then you'll make your way back to dog. Okay? <laughs> Otherwise, from our lunge, we're going to press the hands onto the thigh, lift the tail under. Now start to squeeze into the back of your left hamstring. On this side, I often get cramp in my thigh. Don't know why. <laughs> so let's just see what happens. And then you're gonna reach back, take the inside edge of the foot if you can with your left hand. If you're feeling really wobbly, again, a block can be helpful here just to give you a bit of height. Looking good. And again, come to your belly if you need to do a quad stretch, it's fine. Good, one more breath here. Carefully release, don't swing shots, so squeeze the glutes. If you're on your belly, you're just going to push back to downward facing dog. And from this lunge shape, again, we'll just press back to downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Left leg rises, flexing through that left side, inhaling. Exhale to squeeze the knee to the nose and come forwards into your crescent lunge, lowering your knee. Have a breath in crescent lunge to lengthen the spine and bring tone into the low belly on the exhale. If you need to come onto your belly to take the quad stretch, come to your belly and bring your right heel in if you're staying here. So again, on the instep of the foot, again, to find openness across the chest and draw that little bit of stretch into the quad. So it can be quite extended, that's fine. And just lengthening the breath. Now, so you can draw your right hip forwards and down, or tail under as you draw the right hip forwards, and draw the left shoulder back and down. Lovely. Breathing in. Breathing out. Last one. If you're laying on your belly, keep drawing the tail under. Good. And then carefully release without slingshotting. Step it back to downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. Inhale to all fours. Finding that little arch. Exhale to child's pose. 
Inhale to come straight into kneeling. Tuck the toes if you need. Hands to low back. Exhale to open into a little baby camel. Ustrasana. Inhale, squeeze it in line the legs. Lift the chest back up. And then exhale to sit back on your knees. Good, well done. So we'll, we'll just take one more round of those a little bit more quickly um, without the quad stretch this time. So we're going to inhale, come all the way up to kneeling this time, extend the arms up. Exhale, roll it all the way down to child's pose. Inhale, open up like a little cow. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up, look forward. Exhale, squeeze knee to chest, plant it down through crescent lunge. Inhale to rise up, reach tall, little back bend perhaps. Exhale, bring the hands down. Stepping back to downward facing dog. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good, left leg rises. Inhale, exhale, knee to nose. And lower down to your crescent lunge. Inhale to rise up, draw the right hip forward, tail under. Exhale, little back bend. Inhale to bring the hands down. Exhale, this time we'll step it back to a plank. Really press the mat away. Draw the tail under, squeeze the inner line of the legs, squeeze up on your kneecaps. And then lower your knees, your chest and your chin. Keep hugging in with the belly here. Inhale, a little cobra. Exhale to child's pose. Have you taken an extra breath in child's pose there, breathing in? Maybe massaging out the forehead on the floor a little bit there. Breathing out. Good. And then from here, just start to bring yourself up to kneeling and then press your hands just in front of your knees. Tuck your toes. See if you can start to roll back a little bit so that we stretch out the ankles, the Achilles there. See if you can ground the heels. Don't worry if you can't, just go to the, where it feels manageable. And then press the hands in front of your feet and start to lift the hips up. So keep the head going down, tail going high, and you might straighten the legs, they might stay quite bent, leaving belly to thighs. As you inhale, take a little halfway lift, so lift the gaze, maybe straighten the legs and lift the chest away from the belly if that works for you, if not, just go to where you can. Exhale, fold. And then bend the knees, Keep the knees bent as you roll all the way up to standing. Head comes up last, gives the shoulders a roll. Lovely. And then we'll just step out along the long edge of your mat from where you are. So just come to about a leg's distance apart. And we'll just take a couple of standing hip openers here. So remember this idea of Padabanda, the Mula, the root chakra that we started with. We're pressing the feet down. Bring your hands just to your, the tops of your hips for a moment and feel that you draw the shoulders down, the low ribs in a little. Spiral from the top of the right thigh again to rotate that right foot out. Bend your knees a little bit. Slightly turn your chest towards that leg as you come, either to take your big toe or to press on your shin. And then roll it back open from strength, squeezing up on the kneecaps, rolling the top shoulder back, drawing the right shoulder blade down a little, and then extending the left arm up. here for another three breaths. Again, really visualising here that length from tail to crown. You can look up to the top hand if it feels good or just look straight ahead or down. Lovely. To come out of it, again, bend the knees, look down, press the ground away to rise up, inhaling, and then exhaling, hands to waist, or keep the arms out if it feels good. Again, a little spiral from the left here, buoyancy in the knees. Coming down either to press on the shin or to take the big toe and then rolling up and out of it again. Squeezing up on the kneecaps. Just noticing if you can find that length from tail to crown. So every inhale you're really feeling that space from the tailbone to the crown of the head, no tension in the neck. Exhale, feeling the connection and strength into your belly. Lovely. Breathing in. Breathing out, last one, keep pulling up on the kneecaps a little. 
Exhale, good, look down as you breathe in, press the ground away to rise up to stand. Exhale there, turn the feet to parallel and then straight back out so that you, um, your knees are going to go over the centre of your foot as we come into goddess. So you're going to inhale the arms all the way up, just so the shoulder width apart. And then exhale, really pull the shoulders down the back, press into the feet to come down. Inhale, stretching tall, squeezing up on the kneecaps. Exhale, squat down with that feeling of the earth, pressing you up and down almost through the soles of the feet. Lovely, just one more there. Inhaling up. And then exhale, bring the arms out to the side and parallel your feet. Lovely, so we're just going a little bit deeper now. Uh, so you might want to, no we won't, sorry, we're coming back to stand. <laughs> Take all the feet in and come to the top of the mat. Ignore me, turn into autopilot. <laughs> we're going to step the right foot back. However, if you can't see me and you do that, let's do it this way. Just set your left foot back. <laughs> left foot is definitely going back and then you can stay seeing me. Draw the hips towards uh, parallel again. Inhale, lengthen, soften the right knee and then exhale, reach the crown of the head forwards, turn in the low belly. Maybe bringing the hands um, either side of your foot. Again, if you've got your blocks, you can take your blocks and press into those to lengthen here and find a little more straightness in the front leg. Wherever you are, we're keeping a micro bend in that front leg, ground down through the back foot, and then inhale, really lengthen the spine forwards, exhale, roll it in. Inhale, rolling the heart open, exhale to roll it in. Let the head go completely at the end of the exhale so the neck is relaxed. Inhale, peel the spine forwards, almost like a cat cow. Exhale, rolling in. And then bend that right leg. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step the feet to hip distance and fold. Bending the knees again, roll all the way up to stand. You can reach the arms out and up if that feels good. And then exhale, bring them back down. We're going to step the right foot back. Just feel again that you draw the right hip forwards and ground the blade edge of that right foot. A little bit of buoyancy in the left leg, inhale, reach the heart forwards, exhale, fold it down. And then again, there's little waves through the spine. Good. Keeping strength in the front leg. Great, try not to lock out that front knee. Good. Could be a really small movement. Lovely. Next time that you fold in, on your in-breath, you're going to prepare to join the feet back together. In, forward fold, exhale in. And then from here, bend the knees again, roll all the way up to stand, bring the arms up, inhale. Exhale, float the arms all the way back down. Lovely. And then we're going to take a, a normalish flow down to the mat. So just step to Sam seated here to the top of the mat so you've got space. And then inhaling. Sweeping the arms up, look up, press your palms, exhale, fold, press the hands into the ground, bend the knees if you need, let the head relax. Inhale, leading from the heart, extending the crown of the head forwards. Exhale, really press into the palms, bend the knees as much as you need. So you're pressing from the shoulders, as you press from the shoulders here, feel your low belly switch on, so as you step back to plank, there's no um, lifting of one wrist or the other. Squeeze the inner line of the legs, squeeze your glutes, hold this plank, and then lower your knees, chest, chin. Inhale, peel the heart open to really roll the shoulders down the back, and then exhale to child's pose. And let the forehead come onto the mat. Good, again, just take one breath in there, one breath out. And then roll yourself all the way up to kneeling, exhale there. So extending your legs straight out in front of you, little stretchy sequence. <laughs> so bringing your right leg in, just see if you can find that little bit of rotation around the joint again, without using um, your hands, you can take the hands away and just feel that centre moving there, good. And then bring the sole of the foot in towards your leg there, good. Taking a breath in to prepare. 
And a breath out, fold over your leg there. Great. And again, we can take a couple of little cat cows with the spine here. So a little inhale to roll it open and an exhale to come forward. So notice here if you can have that little bit of Mula and Ujjana Bandha, sense of the heart reaching, softening the hands wherever is comfortable and then let the crown of the head go. So it might be that you're quite upright and it looks like this. And if you're coming forwards, really feel the head is heavy and relaxed. The strength is in the centre of the body there. Good. Breathing in. And breathing out. Lovely. Slowly peel it up. Inhale. Exhale there. Bring your left arm out to the side. Internally rotate and wrap it around behind you. Either to catch the top of your leg or maybe just a, a bit of clothing on your back there. Bring your hand either outside the calf or foot or just above your knee and take a twist. So if you can reach the outer edge of the foot, you can come into that variation. And again, there's a sense of pulling away from the ground. So your foot is your ground there, you're pressing it away from you. You're pulling up through the center, you're opening the heart to the side and then the crown of the head, there's that lightness above it. Just watching the breath in and out through the nose. And then releasing, slowly come back up through the centre. And then just slightly turn yourself so that you have a little bit more space to bring the right hip open or the right leg open. Turn the body towards that right leg and then we're just going to reach along the inside of your left leg. So if this feels really tight, you're going to be here and you're just going to be finding length through the right side of the body here. If you know this variation of Jenny C and you know you can come in the mind, Go for it. But find the length, the up and over. And again, that feeling of reaching the, the above your, your head. So there's no strain. And eventually the head can kind of relax out there. <laughs> One more breath there. Good. And then inhaling, coming up. Exhale, release. Good. Fun lying down vinyasa now. I love these. These are some of the, the main sequences. So you're going to extend the feet in Dandasana and then exhale, really squeeze the legs together and use the lower belly to roll the spine down. Inhale, bring the legs straight up, so press the hands into your mat. And then exhale, you're going to bring the legs as far overhead as you can. Good. Inhale, bring them back up. And then exhale, bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Inhale, roll the spine up through a little bridge. Exhale, roll it all the way back down. Hug the knees into the chest, breathe in, and then rock up, breathing out, sending the legs straight forwards. <laughs> and then the left leg's going to come in for Janu Shishasana A again. So you can take a little bit of active rotation, circles one way, circles the other, feel the strength through the centre of the body, and then just allow the hip to open where it naturally does. Feel the thigh to open. Inhale and then exhale, wave the spine forwards. You can take a couple of waves through the spine like that, rippling the heart forwards. And then come to stillness. Again, feeling that the extended foot there is your earth. So you've got that pressing away actively with that foot. Opening the collarbones and let the head relax. Whether you're quite far forwards on your leg or quite upright, Feeling length through the back of the neck. Great. Soften the jaw. Keep actively pulling up along the kneecap on that extended leg. Okay. You can inhale to come upright. Exhale there. Bring the right arm out. Wind in as much as you can and all the way behind you. And then either taking the outside of the foot, the calf, the thigh, and on the exhale coming into the twist. So again, feeling aware of the sit bones anchoring you down. The core gently supporting your low back, pulling in. And then the side muscles in your belly wrapping the ribs, heart open, crown of the head lifting. Breathing in. 
breathing out. Last breath here, inhale and exhale. Great. Take a little unwind, a little counter twist, and then adjust that left leg out. Really turning just a slight amount towards that left leg and then sliding the right arm inside your right leg. Extending the left arm up, really reach up and out of the waist there. But be careful, you know, don't force here. You can easily put too much stress on your sacroiliac here. So you don't feel that you have to pin the left sit bone down. That sit bone can lift a little to enable greater depth in the pose there. I can remember thinking that I had to pin both my sit bones down here and just really stressing my lower back. So you can let that back hip with the bent leg lift off the ground a little. Good. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale to come out of it. Exhale there. Good. And then extending the legs straight forward. And that's enough. Exhale, roll it all the way down. Inhale, extend the legs straight up. Press the palms down to help you. Exhale, the legs don't um, have to come very far. They can just come here. It's fine. You can bend the knees. Inhale, back up. Exhale, soles of the feet to the floor. Inhale to roll up through bridge. Exhale to ripple the spine back down. Hugging the legs into your chest, breathing in. And breathing out, rocking back up to sit. Really down that center. Good. Lovely. So, we'll just take a brief Upanishad Kanasana, extending the legs out to the side. So, again today, have a bit of a wriggle. <laughs> So we're going to bend the knees if we need, roll the tail back and keep the knees nice and bent so that you've got length again through the spine. And then you might start to lead forwards a little bit. Otherwise we're going to drive the heels away and pull up on the kneecaps. If you know you can bring the chest all the way down, go ahead. If it looks pretty upright here, be here. Just allow the gaze to soften down so you're not worrying about uh, tightness or looseness or anything. And just come back to observing the breath. And then we'll just move ourselves around to the right leg. Inhale. Exhale, little waves. It might be a very small movement. It might be that you come all the way forwards. Inhale, back up through the middle. Exhale, over to the other side. Inhaling up. Exhale, wave forwards. We'll just do that once more side to side. It doesn't matter which leg you go to first. So notice here if you can keep the heels grounding down and the kneecaps a little bit engaged. And again, just moving from the center of the body to extend your spine. Inhale, coming up. Exhale there. And bend the knees, draw the legs in. And we'll roll it all the way back you can either take a full vinyasa here, or you can just step to downward facing dog. Completely up to you. If it feels good to come through plank, lower knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga up dog if you wish. Inhale, roll the heart open. Exhale to downward facing dog. Taking a breath in. And a breath out. So we're going to come to the knees for a moment. Staying on all fours. Bend your elbows, actually, before you bend your elbows back, think about pulling the armpits down towards your hips. So find that strength and engagement in the sides of the shoulders and the ribs. And then we're going to bend the elbows down. So it might feel a bit odd, you might have to let the hips go back. And then we're going to inhale, press up through the hands. So you, this might feel really hard on the backs of your arms. Just, just explore it and feel that the, the centre of the body, that you're hugging everything in, so the elbows are wrapping in. The armpits are pulling down towards the belly. Good. And then just have a little rest. Give your wrist a little roll. So if you're well practiced at this, you can come from downward facing dog. Again, let the crown of the head be heavy, no tension there. And you can press down and up. And press down and press up. Um, if it was difficult on all fours, don't worry about that. Have a try if you're, I don't know, have a go. Good, you'll know quite quickly if it's not for you. It's pretty intense. But as you do it, again, draw back to centre and let the crown of the head relax. Good, great. And 
And then when you've done a couple of those, come back to child's pose for a moment, just have a little rest. And bring the hands back alongside your um, feet. So because we're gonna end the, the practice with shoulder stand optional, I'm just gonna show you some of these shoulder openers today. Also dolphin pose, where we're going next, is brilliant for what we're working on today. So we'll come to dolphin next. If you feel that it's really uncomfortable having your arms parallel like this, interlace your fingers, clasp the hands, and really press the forearms down. And that can really help you to find the, the strength in the shoulders there. You might find with the hands clasped like that and the forearms, you might feel that you can press down more and plug the shoulders down. And it will feel less uh, intense in the tops of your shoulders, hopefully then. And then we're gonna lift the hips up and walk the feet in. If the hamstrings are tight, bend the knees and allow the body to come so that the tail is stacking a little bit more. You can very carefully and gently shift the weight backwards and forwards a few times. Straighten the legs if you can. And then again, come back and take a little rest in child's pose. I'm just having a little look at what's going on. Good. So, I've said this probably many times, this used to make me feel physically sick, this posture, because it's so hard. <laughs> and it, it does, you know, it does get better. So just make sure that you bend the knees and really set the tail up, that's it. And then Lucy, really press your forearms down. So the head is off here, remember. Yeah. And so don't go to the point where you're completely exhausted. Just feel that little bit of engagement as the shoulders drawing down. Good, Gemma. Really draw the shoulders down. Lovely, everyone. Good, 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 good. And then have a little rest in child's pose and let the hands come back alongside the hips. And then from here, we're going to come to rabbit. So if you're not sure about this one, just turn your head and have a little look. But otherwise, you, you can bring the knees slightly apart, tuck the toes, hold on behind your heels, and start to really curl the head in, to the forehead right into the knees. And then you're lifting the hips and pulling on the heels. So we'll stretch out all the fascia along your back if you've got a nice curl in there, deep flexion. It's also great for, of course, <laughs> we're on the crown of the head here, so stimulating there and also just a bit of confidence for in um, headstand to get used to that feeling of the head maybe being on the floor. Eventually we don't actually have much pressure on the head, but to start with it can, it can happen when the shoulders aren't quite strong enough. So the previous posture and this one, a really great way to build strength and um, that kind of feeling of safety for headstand. Safety and sensation, I should say. Great, and then come back to child's pose. Just let the forehead be on the mat, stay low, and just let the blood come back to the uh, head a bit more normally, or come out of the head, I suppose. Good. And then gradually, when you're ready, just make your way back to all fours. We're going to come to Anahatanasana, which again can feel pretty tight in the shoulders. So a good first place to be is to bring the elbows onto the mat, hands into prayer and tuck them behind your head and then reach forward and stretch out there. If you're comfortable to come to puppy, you're going to bring the chest forward. I actually prefer to call this Anahatanasana or heart opening. I'm not really sure why it's called puppy. <laughs> Maybe because you've got short dog legs here. <laughs> yeah. And if you're feeling a lot of pinching in the shoulders, just back away a little bit and draw the low belly in. Good. Alison, are you okay there? Oh, I think she's frozen. <laughs> okay, good. And then slowly pad your way out of it. Come to downward facing dog, so tuck the toes, lift the hips nice and high, and hopefully the shoulders feel nice and warm, though they might feel a little tired. Take a breath in, and a breath out. Good, and then from here, walk your hands back towards your feet, start to bend the knees loads, and we'll come to Manasana. So squat down, if you can't get the heels down, roll your mat and make yourself a little shelf for the heels to press down into. And shift the weight a 
little bit side to side and then settle into the centre. Bring the hands to heart centre, press the upper arms into the legs and the legs into the upper arms to lift the chest here, draw the shoulders down. And then see if you can just lift your tail a little bit there, breathing in, breathing out, let it relax. Breathe in, breathe out, draw up with the pelvic floor in Ujjayana, lift, feel the legs really fire up there. And release. And let's just do one more of those because it's pretty challenging. Inhale, and then exhale, draw up with the pelvic floor and the low belly to lift up. Really feel your inner leg muscles working. Bring the hands forwards, don't lose it. Keep that squeeze of the legs. Maybe tip it into a little crow. Great, you can always come out of it, take a child's pose and come back in. And even if you're not coming to crow, keep that squeeze of the legs, that fire, that energy in the legs. Lovely, and then take a rest when you need. So it's deeply opening and strengthening for the hips. And of course, we've got that deep intuitive awareness that we worked on last week. You've got to let the gaze be really focused to concentrate on the balance. Great. And then from here, we'll just roll it back up to sit. Spin your legs to the side. We'll just take a couple of rounds of Navasana to Baddha Konasana. Because then if we want to come to headstand, really be to have fired up the core and the legs so that we're really strong and upright when we come up. So you're going to tip the weight back. Maybe extend the legs to here and hold the legs. Maybe reach the arm forwards. Maybe straighten. Two, three, four, five. Good. Squeeze in. Really curl in. Maybe press down and do the little pick up if you want to. And then we'll go again. Here you go. If it makes you feel any better, I've already done my um, full primary school this morning with really long navasanas. So I'm feeling this. <laughs> Good. Hug in, squeeze, press down. Now really squeeze up through your pelvic floor. Believe you can do that lift. <laughs> Good. Last one. Two. You can do it. Keep lifting the chest. Three. Keep the breath long and fine, four, five, well done, squeeze in, little pick up, and then just allow the soles of the feet to come together, let the knees relax out. Great. And again, let's do like almost a cat-cow here in Balakanasana. So inhale, lift the heart, exhale, curl in. Inhale, lift the heart, exhale, curl in. Inhale, lift. Inhale if you can reach the chest forwards. So again, you might be fairly upright, you might be able to bring the chest all the way down. But any stage in between, the gaze is coming down. And you're really feeling again that little connection of the feet pressing together, just a tad. That little bit of um, Udiyana to draw the body long. Good, and just relaxing any tension in the jaw. Last breath there, inhaling, exhaling, good. Inhale, coming up, extend the arms to the side, draw the knees together, and bring the legs straight forwards. Good, so we're coming to lay down, hooray, that little roll down again, all the way down. Inhale, extend your legs straight up, press the palms into the mat, exhale, bring the legs as much over as you wish. Inhale, bring the legs straight up, and exhale, bring the soles of the feet to the mat. So we'll come through bridge, and then option to come to Urdhva Dhanurasana for wheel pose if you wish. So just check in that you've got um, a nice setup here that you can just about touch your heels, knees, hips, feet are in line, draw the shoulders down the back. Take a breath in, and a breath out to roll the spine away from the ground. When you get to the top, again, lift the chin a little bit, draw the shoulders together, interlacing the fingers, pressing the upper arms down. And holding there for another good three breaths. Good, 
one more inhale exhale last one feeling the inner line of the legs that's it good and then on the exhale roll it all the way down releasing the hands first obviously great give the knees a little hug to the chest you can repeat that and or if you would like to come to Urdhva Dhanurasana you can come to Urdhva Dhanurasana now so we'll all prepare together as if we were coming to bridge I should say if you want to take a restorative bridge now and put the block under your back you're really welcome to do that otherwise we're going to inhale bring the arms up hug the shoulders down press the palms behind the back exhale there take a breath in to prepare and then squeezing all the way up pressing the ground away and holding for five breaths as you can keep reaching the chest away behind you and imagining again that length from tail to crown to keep it out of the low back lovely press the ground away with the feet straightening the legs beautiful and then slowly slowly bring it back down and give the knees a hug good it's coming Hilary <laughs> And then from here, again, we'll just take a little gentle rock up to sit or roll to your side and come to Paschimottanasana, forward fold. So again, you can have a really deep bend in your knees here. Allow the tail to tip back first and just feel that we get that gentle release and length through your back. If it feels good when you get there, of course, straighten the legs. Soft bind around the feet or holding onto the shins and let your head go. So remember again here that we're stretching the whole back line of the body. So we're feeling that even stress from feet and then all the way over the back of the body, out the crown of the head. I suppose I shouldn't, I don't really mean the word stress. What I mean is the tension is distributed evenly. So you're really tuning into that feeling of the breath looping up the back line of the legs all the way over the spine all the way over your head and back and around and just allowing the head to soften down there and just if you want to hang on too much with the hands just keep a little broadness across the collarbones yeah <laughs> everyone's shoulders just went ha ah, then <laughs> lovely three more breaths And then really slowly roll yourself up to Dandasana, seated. So, um, option to come to headstand or a little bit of headstand prep now, if that's something you're working on, um, and you can use the wall. So some of you I know are doing that. If you haven't really done it much, please don't do it. And we'll come to Vikarita Karani. So you can have legs up the wall. Um, welcome to take a shoulder stand if you prefer. Um, but otherwise you can just spin the legs up the wall and chin up there. So if you're taking headstands, go ahead and come into that. So same setup for this as we practice with our dolphin. Elbows under shoulders. You can measure that if you like by doing the old measuring trick to check that they're there. Interlace the fingers, really press the forearms down. And then don't go too wide with the elbows. If the elbows start to collapse out, you'll never find the stability. So they do need to be quite narrow. It's like there. Yeah. And you're gonna draw the shoulders down the back. Plug them, really plug them down. Keep pressing into the forearms and lift your hips. That's your dolphin prep. If the head's coming down, it's the same. You don't lose the integrity there with the forearms and the shoulders. So you can practice dolphin with the head down as well. And then. If you can get the hips to the point where they come really high, your legs will just want to float up. And that's the bit that's a bit scary. So we never jump. We uncurl and squeeze up, moving from the center. And the crown of the head, I mean, my head is kind of off, actually. There's a tiny amount of pressure there. So you're really drawing the shoulders down the back to find that. And it's the same with this dolphin shape. So if the legs aren't elevating, you're still finding that deep strength and connection. Have a little try. 
Good, Katie. <laughs> and if you have legs against the wall and you're elevating there, again, just focus on feeling lightness about the front of the head. Good, Jade. Keep pressing the forearms down. Lovely. And now really squeeze the inner line of the legs. Yeah, so Lucy, for you, think about drawing the shoulders down your back. Have a rest when you need. Yeah. Lovely. So Hugh, think about squeezing into a little ball rather than jumping. So to do that, you have to press the ground away with all your might with the forearms. Yes, there we go. Squeeze in, get the hips stacking, yeah. Keep pressing the forearms down and bring the feet to the wall. So just make sure that you're not collapsing back on your head there. Keep pressing the forearms down, squeeze belly in. Good, and to come out of it, again, squeeze into a ball as if you're doing an abdominal crunch and lower the legs down and stay in child's, good. And if you've already come down and you're in child's pose there, you can start to extend yourself into Shavasana. So make sure that you're really nice and warm. Again, no rushing, just taking some time there. Great. Lovely, well done. So make sure you've got your blankets and just allow yourself to drop straight into it. So you've worked really hard in lots of ways today, kind of slow and steady, but lots of that sense of drawing everything up and in from the ground. So now let everything just melt into the ground. So there's this lovely idea of energy exchange in everything that we do. So just let the earth be holding for you now. And you're just soft. almost as if it was pressing up against you to hold you in space. I'm just coming back to the soft rise and fall of your breath now. And just let the little buzz of the practice die down. And inevitably, as we come to stillness, the mind becomes active and busy. And just see if you can gently feel that sense of lightness over the whole of the top of your head. The brow relaxing, the inner corners of the eyes relaxing. And as if each thought that comes just kind of wafts out above the crown of the head. And it's just really light. It's easy just to watch the thoughts go one by one, drifting in and out so that you can really just feel your attention settling on the space between each of those thoughts. And from that lovely sense of lightness above your head, see if you can extend that out through the whole body now. So often with this area, there's um, this idea of a shimmering lilac, or almost like a diamond, where there's those multi-facets of white and grey and pink and lilac. And maybe every time you breathe out, see if you can imagine that light shimmer extending out, down the arms, down the torso, down the legs. And seeing that as just a simple energy or prana or life force within you. And it's always there, whatever else is going on around us. So as you become still, you just have space to notice that. Notice that light, that ease, that ongoing perfect self.
deepen your breath. Allow that sense of light and shimmer to stay with you the rest of the day. And any time you feel overwhelmed or tired or too many thoughts and emotions start brimming, just bring yourself gently back to that reminder of what is at the centre, that light, that shimmer, that ease. And this is the hardest part of our practice, but the most valuable. And so just start to deepen the breath a little more. Feeling with every inhale that you draw in more of that sense of light and ease and fill yourself up with it for the rest of the day. Press each finger together one by one against your thumb. Bring a little movement to wrists and ankles. And then when you're ready, take a full stretch, reach the arms overhead, breathing in deeply. Uh, breathe out, give yourself a little hug. And then just gently rolling onto your right side. Just settle there for a moment. And then gently press yourself up to seating. Sitting. Hmm. Great. Lovely. Again, just giving the shoulders a little roll. little we'll rock back and forward. And then just feel that you can draw the hands over the knees to bring back that sense of length and space as you sit. And let's take that little lotus mudra again and draw the breath around ourselves. So little finger edges of the hand together, thumb edges of the hand together, fingers are opening out. And again, you draw up from the mud all the good stuff. Allow that lotus to bloom over the top of your head and exhale, surround yourself with all that lovely post-practice feeling. <laughs> Inhale, opening it up. Exhale, making yourself a protective bubble for the rest of the day. Inhale, opening it up. Exhale, bringing it around. Well done, everyone. Namaste.